to see you. Good to see you too, man. How you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm doing good. Um, tell me, what's the adjustment been like from Arkansas Little Rock to Kansas State? What's the biggest difference? Um, the biggest difference, you know, is just adjusting to new teammates, a new coaching staff, um, a new atmosphere. That's really the only adjustment I really had. Um, it's been a great adjustment, though. It's not a negative adjustment. It's a great adjustment being with new guys on a higher level. So, Who's impressed you most of the guys you've, you've played with this preseason? Who, ha who has impressed me the most? Yeah, of your new teammates, who's impressed you the most? I feel like all the guys have. Um, everybody has shown what, what, what they are capable of on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but if I had to choose one, it would be probably Ishmael, Mike, um, you know, Sal. Everybody has improved in their own way, whether it's maturity, um, their skill development, their leadership. Um, so I really, it's a great group of guys this year that I'm, I'm happy to work with this year. Um, Mike and Selton said you've uh, shown off your range in a couple pickoff games or pickup games. You even won some by shooting from the logo. Um, tell me about that. Where did you, uh, where did you learn to, you know, shoot from that far away? Um, I've learned to shoot that far when I was a kid. You know, I used to do drills with where I had to make 25 in a row, probably from from deep. Um, just me and my my father just just playing in a, in a playground in New York City, just working on that game, and he always knew that shooting is a big part of basketball and if you're able to shoot you could pretty much play anywhere so um that just led me to you know working on deep range shots logo shots at a consistent rate um I shoot I, I shoot a lot of shots a day so probably 500 close to a thousand some days so I'm really confident when I shoot them shots and it's it's momentum changing when it's in a game and you know, you probably down to when you shoot that type of shot, it changes the whole dynamic of the game. So I just really work on those type of shots throughout the day. And, and how does Coach Weber react when you take those kind of shots? Has he learned to be okay with them? Um, he, he, he learns to be okay with it because he's seen me working on my game. So if it's something that I'm doing um, in a game, nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, I worked on it multiple times, day in and day out. So when I'm hitting at a consistent rate, um, when, when you see me working out and you see that I'm capable of shooting it on a regular basis, it's not, it's not much of a surprise to you um, than it would be somebody watching in the stand. So he, he learned to, you know, um, just let me shoot at least one or two of those parts of the game. And last one for me, what's the, I mean, we call Manhattan the little apple here. You're from the big apple. Yeah. How, how different are these two cities? Um, pretty much different. One is more quiet and, and slow paced. The other one is pretty uh, rowdy and, you know, fast paced, but it's been great in the little apple. They, uh, it's a great atmosphere, friendly and family oriented. So it's been great so far and I'm loving it here. I'm loving the people at K-State. I'm loving, you know, the little apple. All right. Hey, thanks, Marquise. Good to hear. I'm glad to, glad to talk to you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next question is to Scott Fritchin. Hey, Marquise. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Well, good, good. First of all, I, I want to know um, what park you played at. What area of New York City were, would you ball in? Scott, man, I, I I played in pretty much every park you could think of, the Rucker Park, Dykeman, Tri-State. Um, growing up, when I was with my father, in about I was about third grade, we used to go to from park to park, just walk around with a basketball, going to different parks, you know, working out for about one or two hours. So I pretty much played in every park in Harlem, New York, that you could think of, but the most fun I've ever had was probably in Dykeman, Dykeman Park. Who were some of the guys? I know a lot of people play at Rutgers. What, who were some of the guys you balled against? I balled against a lot of people, um, like Isaiah Whitehead, Isaiah Briscoe, um, 
league guys, Lance Stevenson, Nazir, Nazari, Nazari Reed. Um, I bought I bought against a, a lot of good competition in my days. So um, it's been a lot of pros that I've seen, and it's been a lot of D one athletes that I've seen around. So how did uh, how did Shane Southwell into the picture for you? He's from New York. He's a New York native, man. Right, right. Yeah, but like, how how do you get connected with them? Um, I've I've in the gym actually. Um, I was working out. He was with Deron Lim one day, and uh, we he he was there alongside Deron Lim, and we were just chopping it up, talking about basketball. And I ended up going to his house and playing 2K, not knowing that years down the line he would be recruiting me. So it was just a you know friendly basketball uh, competition that we was playing, and it just grew to a, a long term relationship. So how old were you when you played 2K in this house? Man, you taking me back, Scott? I don't <laughs> even know. Um, I was probably like 10, 11. Probably okay. younger, but I was, was around that to, that age. So uh, tell me about the recruiting process. I heard Bruce said that he had you on a Zoom call. What was that about? So um, the, my recruiting process, it was a short journey because I had entered the transfer portal. Um, I heard from a couple, you know, schools, um, but the one that stood out to me was obviously K-State. And, you know, I'm like, Shane was telling me how good uh, we were going to be this year. And he was like, let's jump on the Zoom. So we jumped on the Zoom. I wasn't able to meet um, in person because of, you know, the COVID and stuff like that. So we jumped on a Zoom call. He had all the coaches on there, including an athletic trainer, um, assistant coaches, you, you name it, they had everybody on Zoom call and they were just telling me that this this is going to be a special year and that this is a special program. And once we jumped on the Zoom call and talked about, you know, uh, where they where their mindset was at for this year, it was like a no-brainer to come out. Shane's getting pretty old. Can you take him now? Man, he's getting younger by the day, Scott. What you talking about, Scott? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, yeah. But he's he's... He he's a mastermind when it comes to basketball, man. Like he he's getting older, but like it, it's like we know how to how to approach Shane. He's like one of us. He's he's a younger um coach and like his intelligence for the game, his IQ for the game is just unbelievable. And it's and it's like when you have him as a as a young coach and then you have Bruce as an older coach it just fit and gel so perfectly. And it's like, um, it it's just setting up for success. Appreciate you, man. Can't wait to watch you play. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Marquise, hope you're doing good, man. Um, I'm just wondering, what do you think, what do you, what kind of damage do you think you'll be able to do offensively when you, and let's say Nigel Packer out on the court together. Um, I feel like I bring a different level and a different dynamic to this team. Um, I could create my own shot from pretty much um, inside of half court. And but I love passing. Like that's a underrated skill that I have. I have a high basketball IQ. So when I'm around other good players, um, I know how to play with them. So Nigel Pack. Mike McGraw, Selton. Um, I'm going to have a lot of assist to those guys because not only do I know how to shoot, but I also know how to get my teammates involved. So when we play together, it's going to be a lot of threes. It's going to be uh, defense. We're going to be pr pride on our defense this year. And we're just going to be energetic. And when y'all when when see us play this year, y'all going to feel us. Y'all going to feel the energy. And y'all going to love what we have this year has there been any learning curve um on this defensive philosophy that this that this coaching staff instills not really it's been a it's been a couple things that you know i had to adjust because of my last school but it, you know defense is the same thing same principles shell 
once you understand shell and you know how the shell drill works, you pretty much um, got it for life. And I keep hearing about um, your strength from players and coaches. Um, how much do you bench and how much does that help you on the court? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I, I try to go hard um, during the off season with benching, squatting and stuff like that, because when season rolls around, you know, you can't uh, squat and bench heavy. So I could I could squat a good amount. I'm not sure if I 315, 325. I could bench 225. Um, dumbbell press, I could get up to about 95, 100. In that range, so yeah, I've been going crazy ever since I came to K State. I don't know, man. Something in the food. <laughs> um, what do you think of the strength and conditioning program that they have as well? You know, as well as the food. <laughs> Excellent. I love AA. Um, he's our strength and conditioning coach. Not only does he know what he's doing, but he also is is open to hearing from the players. So. And I think that's big for strength and conditioning coaches. If if you want to get to the next level, um, and AJ has been treating us good throughout the summer and going into the season now, and each each one of us felt the big a big jump in our games and our conditioning and our strength. And in my case, so I feel like he knows what he's talking about. The guys can trust him, and we we really. Enjoy having AJ on the staff. Thanks for the time, Marquise. We'll see you soon, man. Thank you, man. Uh, other questions for Marquise? I have a couple for him. I was going to let you guys go, though, before I ask him. What's going on, Tom? Go. <laughs> a couple questions. You mentioned your dad. Can you tell us about kind of your dad's background and then your relationship with your dad? Uh, my relationship with my dad is pretty good. Um, he put the ball in my hands when I was younger, um, and that's when I grew a love and passion for the game. Um, he taught me how to shoot, and my dad wasn't even a shooter back then in his days. Um, he grew up playing in Rucker Park in his era where he got the name Tasmanian Devil because he used to do a lot of spin moves and dribble moves. So that's where I kind of got some of my handle from, but from him not being able to shoot, he transferred that knowledge and he made me become more of a shooter than a ball handler. So me and my dad has a great relationship. Um, he has taught me pretty much everything I know today. And it, it, it's a special relationship that we have. Um, obviously, probably your height probably good people are gonna probably have talked about that because obviously basketball players usually are taller kind of what kind of what kind of chip did that give you growing up huge chip on my shoulder Tom a huge I love when people underestimate me I love when people see my size and be like he can't do this or that you know that just it it gives me a a, a flame in my heart and a chip on my shoulder that that will never leave me because whenever I step on the court, they, the opponents always feel like they got an advantage because they're taller. So being an underdog is like a blessing and I love it. Um, I love being short. I don't ever ask this guy, can I be six foot? I am what I am and I, um, I am who I am. So I just, I just love being five seven because when I come out there and I perform at a high level, it's like, there's no excuse. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you're from New York. Um, what was the journey like from New York and then going to Little Rock? I mean, that's probably got to be a huge culture shock. How did that, how did you, how did you end up at Little Rock to start? And then how was that kind of transition? So I ended up in Little Rock because another, the assistant coach at Little Rock is from Harlem, New York too. So it was that connection, um, he, Grew up watching me play, and excuse me. Um, he 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 knew that I had something um, unique, and he wanted me to be on his team. So 
that that connection that me and Coach Jordan, that's at um, Morehouse in Georgia, he, he was the star of, of Marquise Noel. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be at K-State. I wouldn't be at Little Rock. And I'd probably be, you know, back in New York somewhere. So if it wasn't for him recruiting me, um, I don't know really where I would be because growing my senior year in high school, I had zero offers time. I had zero. I got injured. I had zero offers. And I didn't know if I was going to play basketball again. So, you know, I just I just grinded out. I just, you know, stood the course. I, I ran my marathon. I, I never questioned God. And by that time, you know, you know, things work in mysterious ways. And I got a call from Coach Jordan. And he was like, you know, I want you on my team. I feel like I could put the ball in your hands and you can make this um, team special. The first year I got there, my freshman year, I showed glimpses of how special I was and how um, I could do on a on a college level. And then sophomore year, I had um, broke out. I had become Lou Henson, All-American, first team, all Sun Belt. And that's when I knew that you know, God has bigger plans for me. So thanks to Coach Jordan at uh, Morehouse for uh, recruiting me. And the rest is history. Okay. Uh, sparked some more questions for some others. So uh, next question to Scott Fritchen. Yeah. Hey, Marquise, um, we're going to be talking to Ish in a little bit. I was just wondering if you could brag on him a little bit and what he brings to the table. Ish is a shooter. For real. I know it might be on paper, he might be a, a forward, but that guy can shoot the ball um, from anywhere. His skill level is amazing. You know, he's from New York too. He's a New York native. So he has that dog in him, but very, he loves the game. He's the first in the gym, last in the gym, just like everybody on the team, like Mike Sell. And his skill level is so unique because he's about six, eight can't handle the ball and can shoot off the dribble. So he's going to bring a different look to our team um, when we want to, you know, play three to four guards at the time. And he reminds me of, like, you know, Dean Wade that was here. So I know that's a big, that's a big, you know, compliment and stuff like that. But he, he, he has shown some glimpses of Dean. And then you kind of got a uh, Chicago baller and Mark Smith. Uh, what can you tell me about him? Mark Smith is a is another dog from Illinois. He's a senior leader, um, probably one of the best leaders I've ever been around. He can shoot. He's very aggressive. He has a he has a good physique. Um, strong. Can put the ball on the floor. Can play defense. And he's another person that's always in the gym, chewing at eight in the morning staying after practice, no matter if it's three to four, you know, hours of practice, shooting. So Mark is another good player that we have on our team that that's really going to uh, break out this year. Thank you. Can we, Tom, can we get uh, Arnie, what, what's her name? Arnie Green? Uh, Arnie Green, yeah. <laughs> let me, uh, let me I see what I was about to call on. Just like, get some... <laughs> <laughs> My next question to Arnie Green. <laughs> yeah, Arnie. <laughs> Sorry, had to unmute there. How are you doing, Marquise? Doing good. Doing? Uh, wanted to ask you, at Little Rock, were you, uh, I know you were a point guard, but you also were a pretty big scorer. Did you, were you handling the ball pretty much all the time, or did you, did you play some off the ball? Well, at Little Rock, um, I had to play on the ball most of the time to, you know, initiate the offense. And I was a good playmaker. So, you know, the ball was in my hands 95% of the time, but I knew how to play off the ball. Um, I played with multiple D1 athletes and, you know, pros where, you know, you can't just pound the ball the whole game. And, you know, you have to play a little bit off the ball. So that's And uh, Nigel is also kind of a, a scoring point guard, if you will. Um, do you see the two of you on the floor at the same time and maybe where, where both of you can, 
can sort of play off the ball some, or is that, that something you guys have worked on, or is it going to be pretty much one or the other of you? For sure, we we we'll definitely play some um together. You know, Nigel can shoot the ball, I can shoot the ball. So whenever you know one of us decides to bring up the ball, the other person got to play off the ball. Um, it's not a huge adjustment to playing off the ball. I think. Most of my teammates like playing off the ball majority of the time so they could get pin downs and stuff like that. But it's it's pretty much a, a easy adjustment for the both of us because at the end of the day, we want to win. And whatever winning takes, that's what we're going to have to do. And what about uh, Nigel? What, what do you see in his game that, that you like and how do you guys maybe complement each other at that position? Nigel could shoot the ball like something I've never like. I knew I was a good shooter, but Nigel is like he's a great shooter, um, and he does it so effort effortlessly. And he's a workaholic, just like everybody on our team. Um, and you know, Coach Bruce has been encouraging him to be a better leader um, because you know he's he likes to whisper a lot. He doesn't like to really talk as much, but I've seen him jump from the summer to now and be becoming a better leader, becoming a better scorer, becoming a better point guard. So I feel like our games will complement each other in so many ways because it, we'll, we will have two great leaders, two great scorers on the court at the same time, or even when I'm out or he's out. There, there will always be somebody that knows how to lead and know how to shoot the ball and someone that you can trust. And uh, Coach Weber also talked about about your defense, that that's maybe something people don't realize just how, I guess, how much of a dog you are on, on defense. Some of the other players mentioned that too, that uh, that you really like to get after it, especially in the full court. Is that something you kind of take pride in too? For sure. I take pride in those defense because defense, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. And I've always been uh, a firm believer in that. And I feel like being my size, I can't wait till the opponent gets to half court and run a set. So I have to, you know, put pressure on them in a full court, waste some time um, so that when they come on a half court in, they only have about 15 to 16 seconds to run their, their set. So that dog just comes from being from New York, not being picked a lot. You know, so I had to had to show my teammates that I could do other things than just score and lead. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, another question from Kellis Robinette. Hey, Marquise, you committed before uh, Ish did, so I got to ask him about you, but not you about him. Did you, did you grow up playing with him at all in New York? What For was sure. that like? Me and Ish played in a couple of tournaments together. Um, at Rucker Park and Kingdom and Dykeman. So we already had that chemistry and that love for one another. But when me and Ish play together, it's like it, it gels so perfectly because I know where he's going to be at because of um, our history together. So when, when he said he was coming to Kansas State too, what was your reaction? I was, I was happy. I'm like, I'm going to have my brother here with me, an, another New York native. And you know, he, he he wants to win just as bad as me. So just having him alongside of me is just, it, it's nothing more I could really ask for, for being in Kansas State with the coaching staff, Coach Bruce. Um, I really want to emphasize that Coach Bruce is really a great coach. And not only does he want to win, but he teaches, you know, his his players how to become better people. And that's one thing that I really like about him. All right. Hey, thanks a bunch, Marquise. Thank you. Uh, Marquise, one more from, from me, and then I'll let you go. Um, I appreciate your time. Have you, obviously, I'm going to go back to the height thing, but have you had an opportunity to uh, cross paths with Deuce Vaughn? Obviously, another guy would kind of has been doubted in his career uh, in, a, in another really physically – demanding sport have you had any interaction with him since you've been yeah. at k-state definitely i see dudes Vaughn walking you know uh to class or probably to pt uh, we're pretty much probably the same height 
And just seeing what he's able to do on the football field is like, you know, it's it's inspirational in, in a sense because it's like no matter where you go, no matter who you are, no matter what size you are, you can play at any level if you believe it. And yeah, Duzwan is a cool guy. Um, I see him around a lot and you know, I tell him, you know, we, we need to pull a bar so we can stretch a little bit. You stretch the six foot. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions for Marquise before we let him go? Okay, Marquise, thank you. I really appreciate the time, okay? Thank you, appreciate you for having me. Thank yeah. y'all. Absolutely, Marquise. You have a good rest of your day. You too.